Hey cuties, I'm Lanikia and you're watching what happened on the soaps. This is General Hospital Edition. Um, today is Thursday, July the 14th, 2022. On a scale of 1 to 10, y'all know how we do. I'm going to give this an 8. It was like an 8, 8.5. It was a good episode to me. A lot of things went forward um, on this episode as far, as far as us finding out a lot more information. I like the people that they showed today. So I'm going to give it an 8, 8.5. Um, all right, let's get right on into this. So who do we go to? Let's go to Spencer and Esme. So we start with Spencer and Esme and she, she comes up on him as he's looking at something on his phone and you know, he's like, she scares him and she's like, what's going, what's going on or whatever. And he says, oh, um, he tells her, oh, uh, you just startled me or whatever. And she says, you've been keeping distance from me. And she said, ever since, you know, the fireworks and all that, you haven't been wanting to be around me. So then Spencer flashes back because he didn't want to be around you, girl, because we see Spencer flash, flashes back. And he remembers Rory and Trina kissing. And he so he like, if I hadn't been doing it, if I wasn't doing this stuff over here with you, who I know did this sex tape, I could be over here with Trina and she wouldn't, you know, be kissing all up on Rory. But I know I'm having to be over here with you to try to defend, you know, to try to um, help Trina prove her innocence and everything. But anyways, he just tells her, I have a big surprise for you. Um, I'm Actually, he gets a message. He said, actually, that's this is it right now. It's going to be a huge surprise. I'll be back. So Spencer leaves. He goes to the hospital and everything, and he picks up the results. Because remember, um, he got that DNA and stuff from Carly and Jocelyn, and she proves it match. Well, then he runs into Rory, right? And so uh, he and Rory, I'm not going to hold you long on this, but he and Rory would have words because Rory is like, um, what, are you, what are you doing and, and, and everything? And Spencer's like, you know, minding his own business. He said, like, and you're such a hypocrite talking about you want to make people's lives better. That's what you swore oath as a cop and all that. But here you are with Trina because, yeah, I saw you kissing on her at 4th of July. And Rory said, well, hold on now. What business is it of yours? what Trina and I do, you know, don't you got a girl? And so Spencer's just like, it's not my business, but at one time, Trina and I were really good friends and I don't want to see her get hurt. And Rory said, the only person hurting Trina is you. And then Rory walks, I said, <laughs> okay, Rory. And so Spencer is just like, ugh. So he goes on about his business. All right. So then we see, um, who do I want to go to next? We see, okay, let's just uh, knock out, okay, never mind. So we see Esme, Ava and Nicholas. So Ava and Nicholas are talking at Windermere, and he's like, where are you going? And let me tell you, that little jacket thing, I used to own a boutique, and I had something really similar to that in my boutique, and it sold out it really fast. But it's that what Ava had on, that little um, cardigan jacket like thing, that was really pretty. I, I But Ava always has some of the best style on this show. But anyway, so Ava is there and Spencer's, I mean, Nicholas is like, where are you going? And she said, today is Trina's trial. And he said, I'm sorry, forgive me for forgetting that. And she said, she wanted to tell him something. He could see it. And he was like, what's up? And she said, nothing. And he said, no, tell me. And she said, I wanted you to keep Esme away, you know, from the coming to the trial. Because, you know, Esme would do it just to pick at Trina. And she said, you know, I don't want her, you know, messing with Trina. Like, this is an important day for Trina. It's going to be stressful on her. And I don't want Esme messing this up for Trina. And Nicholas says, um, I don't think I have the influence to keep her away or whatever. But he says, you know, he wishes, wishes Trina the best and all that. And so that's it with them, y'all. So then we see Esme is talking to Nicholas, right? And she's telling Nicholas that um she that Spencer's acting weird with her, but she loves him. And did y'all see how relieved Nicholas was to see Esme say she loves Spencer? <laughs> you think you out of the clear, but sir, you are not, because a word on these poor Charles streets is that Ryan Chamberlain is supposed to write a letter and get it gets to Ava or whatever because I guess Esme is taking too long to reveal what uh, the deed that has been done with Nicholas. But anyways, who knows? So we see that um, Esme and Nicholas talk and she says, well, have you, because I'm not going to hold you long, have you heard anything about my internship with Ryan Chamberlain? He said, yeah, I got shut down. He said, but there is one more avenue that I could go through to try to get it. And she's like, oh, thank you, Mr. Kessler. Y'all know how it is, man. Dude, that's my girl, but she be getting on my nerves, too. And so then that's it with them, y'all. So let's move on. 
So then we see that um, Curtis Marshall are, you know, they're tracking down the lead that Jacket gave them. And so they finally get to, a, um, a, they're going through all these apartments and Marshall a little bit tired because they've been doing it all night. And so Curtis was like, you can go to the car, sit down. I got some water, listen to some jazz. So what did you <laughs> said um no i'm cool um let's keep doing this because he said the trina is like a granddaughter to me she is but uh and so i'm gonna find out what happened so they knock on this door and it's oz and Oz said are y'all cops and they said no jack vouched for us or whatever he said i haven't heard from jack in days and so curtis walks up on oz he said what if we are cops and so he went on in the room or whatever and they started talking about trina's phone and they start about trina and the phone her case and they said, we heard you could get these type of phones and everything, but I know why you want to lay low because with the case, you know, you could be called to testify and all that. And Oz was like, what? And then he was like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have any phones or anything like that. So Marshall Curtis was like, all right, cool. So he walks out and Marshall like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> like, what are we doing? And so they get in the corner and um, they said they get in the corner and then they say, um, we're. Curtis says that's exactly what we wanted to happen. He said because that puts heat on Oz, and so that's gonna make him go to the person that he sold that phone to. And sure enough, Oz came out that room and he jetted. And so they follow him, and he's taking a ferry to Windermere. And they said they no. Marshall said he went out of town, and he said nope, that's the ferry to Windermere. So. Then we see who I'm trying to tie this all together because it was moving parts and all this, but it all it most of it had to call, came back to Trina and her trial. So then we see um Laura, Trina, um, and Diane. And so they're there and Portia. So they're there and Laura's giving her, she has a written statement on behalf of Trina as a character witness and everything. Now Scott, yeah, Christina, uh, Christina has, um, she sure did something with some hot dogs or buffalo. Something happened. And so she's out of the country and got in trouble and Scott having to go over there and take care of her. So Diane's going to step in. She says Scott has done a wonderful job on Trina's case. So she's going to call and take it home. And Joss comes in and she says, yes, Diane's some of, one of the best, Trina. She done got Sonny off a lot of times and he was guilty. And Diane said, Diane didn't know he was guilty. Joss was like, no, he was guilty. She got him off. And Lori then was like, uh, anyways. <laughs> so they they tell Trina about you know how the trial could be. They said now what we could do is 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 because Scott is your lawyer. If you want to, we could try to delay the trial. And she said, well, how long would it delay? And she said, if the judge doesn't think that it's a like you're trying to delay it on purpose, it could be three months to a year. And Trina said, oh no, I can't have this over my head for a year. And I don't want to see it over your head for a year. And so I said, no, I'm going to have your trial today. And Trina said, I am. So she's going to go ahead and have her trial today because she said, I'm not going to sit here and have this like looming over me. She can't go to college. She can't make plans. She can't do things like we're going to do this trial today. And so they start talking to Diane about, you know, what do you think could happen? And Diane said, now nah, I lost some cases where some people I knew was innocent and I've lost the cases. So she said, oh, but this is all about proving reasonable doubt. That's what we have to prove today. And she said, and Trina, you're you, the best person we have is you because you as a character, your character and your integrity as a person, and everything, that's unquestionable. So once we put it, you on the stand and, you know, you talk about it and then you have Cam and Joss in the background. And, and she said, and Joss, don't be rolling your eyes. Don't be um, acting up uh, with the prosecutor and stuff like you just be a well-mannered young lady because, you know, Carly Jr. can Carly Jr. And so she said, you be a well-mannered young lady sitting behind Trina. And they, she said, no, where's the daddy? <laughs> she said, we need, we need Trina's father here. And Portia said, well, he's uh, searching down a lead. And so was Curtis and Marshall. And, she, and Diane said, well, I'm not going to ask because it's better that I not know. And Portia said, yeah, it's better you not know. And Trina like, well, I want to know. And they said, no, <laughs> it's better that you not know as well what's going on behind the scenes. You just focus on this case. And so Laura has to go. So she goes ahead and leave. And um, Trina gets a phone call. So she was like, they know I'm not working today. But she goes and takes a call. So then Ava shows up, right? 
And so Trina and Ava talk for a minute or whatever. And um, uh, uh, Diane tells Jocelyn, now be mindful and respectful to Ava. She's on our team uh, and everything. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And so um, they asked Ava, is she going to be a character witness? And Ava said, no, Scott didn't think it was a good idea. Because, you know, Ava loves Trina like her daughter. And Portia know that too. You know, they had a, they used to be having a war because Portia was like, Trina is not your daughter. This is mine. But Ava was doing stuff because she knew, you know, she loves Trina like a daughter. But plus, it was getting a Portia and she knew it. But let's let's move on because they, they're all past that now because they know at the end of the day, Ava does um, care about Trina and she, she wants to see the best for her. So, anyways, Ava is, um, she was like, nah, they ain't talking that. Nah, nah, I couldn't be a character witness. But Trina was like, that's cool, though, because, you know, you just being here and supporting me, that's all I really want. Or whatever. And so, then they, um, so Portia goes upstairs and Diane walks, Diane uh, is doing something. Uh, no. Portia has went upstairs and she starts, um, it was a case about her medicine. So then Diane come, when she's going downstairs, coming downstairs, Diane and Portia speak and Portia start asking Diane about like, cause Diane said this could be really stressful, but it's a good thing. Trina has a great support system. And Portia's like, so what happens if they don't? And Diane said, you know, mental illness, illnesses that, you know, lay dormant can come up and things of that nature. And so Portia asked a lot of questions and Diane said, your daughter is strong. Like she's a strong woman and she's not going to break. So why are you concerned? And Portia said, oh, you know, I practice, you know, I didn't really get to get into uh, psychology and stuff. I'm just asking questions. So then Diane talks to them and she tells them, I got to go. And Portia's like, I'll walk you out because I have a few more questions. I bet you do. Portia, Portia. But anyways, so then Ava says, Portia, when it's just Ava Joss, and um, Portia, she tells Portia, why won't you use this um, this um, get out of jail free card that you've been having in your pocket? And John said, what's she talking about, uh, Trina? And Trina says, Ava says, Trina has a, a airtight alibi for that she couldn't have done um, the video or whatever, that she couldn't have released it. And so Josh said, well, Trina... Now, you know, but I'm with Ava on this. What is this? So, um, Ava gets up and it's just Joss and Trina talking. Oh, no, wait. Trina says, oh, I lost my necklace. Oh, my necklace that my dad gave me for my 18th birthday. I wanted to have that. And she said, I left it at the gallery. And Ava said, no, 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 don't worry. I took, I sent it home. I took it home with me and it's at Windermere. I can go get it. And she said, please go get it. And so Ava like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go get it. And so Josh said, okay, now that you got Ava out, she said, because don't, don't think I didn't notice you changed the subject. Um, what is the airtight alibi? And so she tells her that she remembered Trina was with Spencer because remember, it was the uh, it was either Courtney's birthday or the day Courtney, I think it was her birthday, or it might have been the day Courtney died, but I want to say it was her birthday and Spencer had got out of prison. Well, that little um, white collar clears and he had got out of the of there to um go visit her on her graveside um at her graveside and Trina had saw him and she was with him when the video was released. That's her airtight alibi. She said, but it's not one hundred percent because you know. They could still said I had it on a timer or something because you can't schedule stuff. But she said, but Josh said, but it proves reasonable doubt. And that's all we need to get you off, to get you off. What are you talking about? And so she said, Trina, you have to tell this. Like, you have to tell what's going on if this could help you. And then here come Portia. What does she have to tell? Like, what's going on or whatever? So then um, we see... Who else? Okay, so then we see that Marshall and Curtis are on the dock, and they said we got we got to get to Win Marshall. Like, let's go take a ferry and get to Windermere. He said, "No, nah, we can't do it." Curtis was like, "We can't do it because that would alert Windermere that we're on our way or whatever, right?" And then Ava shows up and she says, "Hey guys, going my way." And I said, come on, Ava, go and get them on this ferry so we can catch Esme. Baby, y'all seen the previews with Ava open that door like a mom? <laughs> you know how your mama sometimes will open up your bedroom door. Like, what do you expect to catch up in here? Leave me alone. <laughs> but anyway, so so um, Ava's like, going my way. So that's how we know they're going to get over to Windermere. Now, in Windermere, I said, how does 
man get over there so fast. So Esme get a text, right? And she runs to the door because somebody's at the door and it's Oz. And he said, did you get my text message? She said, yeah, what you doing here? And all that kind of stuff. And he said, why is everybody asking me about this phone? Because, you know, he gave it to her or whatever. He said, so why everybody asking me all about this? And what kind of trouble could he get in and everything? So that was it with them, child. And so then we go on to see. Let me just make sure I got everybody out of the way before I go over here. Because, y'all, if Victor don't go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got everybody out the way. Because, y'all, if Victor don't go somewhere and sit down, because Victor and Valentine are talking, right? And Valentine said, wow, we said I was not about to kill Laura. That all eyes would be on me. Like, what would you do? And it is disgusting. The way Valentine, um, the way Victor acts like he loves Charlotte and he is using her to manipulate Valentine. And I said, Valentine, man up. Man up and do something about your daddy. But he said, I can't. But anyway, so Valentina's like, instead of trying to um get Laura out of here, but Val I, I don't oh, okay. Instead of trying to get Laura out of here, why don't you just tell me what's going on so I can help? And Valentine Victor was like, You got to earn my trust and you ain't earned my trust. So I'm gonna still keep using Charlotte to get it to go against you or whatever, and I'm not gonna tell you my plan or or anything like that. Now I had talked about Victor. You know, because I said Victor ain't as bad as everybody say he is. But baby, if you use a child to control somebody, you're, 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 you are, you are. So anyways, he said, don't even worry about Laura now, Valentine. I got it. I'm going to take care, take her out and take care of it. He was like, why you got to kill her? If there's other ways you could get this done. But anyways, so then we go and we see um, Victor leaves or whatever. <laughs> Excuse me. And Valentine. Laura comes up and she's like, Valentine, because she had all these meetings she had to go to. And one of them was at the Metro Court. And she's like, Valentine, so they started talking. And she said, Valentine, you're not a clumsy man. So why did you support for that drink on me? And he was like, you know, since I've been out the clinic and I have my reflexes haven't been the same. Heart. She said, stop it. Stop it. She said, um, the only time you're like this is when you got pressure um, when it comes to Charlotte. It's something going on with Charlotte that I need to know about. And he says, no, everything is fine. And, and I will always do what's best for Charlotte to keep her safe and everything. And so he's talking to Laura and they're on the patio at the Metro Court. So he turns around and he look up or whatever. And Victor got a sniper ready to take Laura out. So Valentine sees this and he pushes Laura out the way. And she said, get your hands off of me. She said, what are you doing? And he said, I I'm just so sorry. I'm clumsy. And she said, uh, 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 Victor. I mean, v Valentine, something is going on. What is it? What is going on? And does it have anything to do with Charlotte? And he tells her knowing everything again. And then she says she gets a phone call and her assistant has went to GH. Instead of being in the Metro Court. And she says, I got to go. We ain't done talking about this or whatever. And so then Valentine tells the sniper, like, no, you get out of here. And so the sniper um, is sitting up with Victor when Valentine calls. And he tells, um, he tells Valentine, he tells um, Victor, you going to take the woman out in broad daylight when mom's standing here? He said, that is not a smart move. There is another way to deal with Laura. He said, first of all, if you think, he said, you see that they're coming after you when it comes to Luke, just off Luke. And I had to go in. You had to steal the um, Ice Princess or whatever that is. And, and I had to play, frame it on Jennifer Smith and all that. He said, what you think they're going to, Anna already, they already on to you. What do you think they're going to do if something happens to Laura? They will never, they will know that it is you and they will always hunt you down to get proof. He said, there's another way to go about this. And I said, well, what is the way, Valentine? Child, Laura go over here to GH, right? And Nicholas is over there because, you know, he's trying to help Esme. And he's over there and he's like, I want to talk to you about Kevin and Esme. And she says, hold on, I'm, just, I'm getting a phone call. And the phone call and she was like, what about my mom? And I said, oh, Valentine, what did you do now? What have y'all done to me, Laura Mama? But um, that was General Hospital today, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you um, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you tomorrow for the final episode of the week. Bye.